we need to talk about helium-3 mining on the moon. So this idea has been spread so widely that most people accept it as a smart idea for the future. After you dig into the details, however, you will probably come to the complete opposite conclusion. So today we will do just that, and we will be looking at the problem through the lens of the new helium-3 mining startup called Interlune. Helium-3 is a rare isotope of helium that contains only one neutron instead of the usual two. It is so rare that it is only produced through the radioactive decay of tritium, which is a controlled substance that is mostly used for boosting nuclear weapons. And this makes it very expensive. Tritium can be produced in a dedicated reactor, or it can also be produced as a byproduct of heavy water reactors. And so while the supply is limited, it's not as inelastic as you might expect. Tritium has a half-life of 12 years, meaning that every 12 years, half of it will decay into the stable isotope of helium-3. So the Department of Energy sells the leftover helium-3 onto the market, and the price has fluctuated from $100 to $3,000 per liter in the last few decades. Helium is a very low-density gas, so a single kilogram of helium-3 is 7,400 liters at standard temperatures and pressures. And so a single kilogram can be up to $20 million when there's supply or demand shocks. The entire annual market is 60,000 liters, so that's just eight kilograms, around $160 million total. Solar winds have created trace levels of helium-3 on the surface of the moon, so this is where the concept of helium-3 mining on the moon comes from. And so in 2020, this startup Interlune was founded to take advantage of this idea. The first proposed use case of helium-3 is nuclear fusion. The benefit of helium-3 fusion is that it does not produce a neutron which makes it a relatively safer reaction, and there is potential to harness the power more efficiently through the charged particles that are generated. The problem, however, is that the reaction cross-section, which equates to the probability of a reaction, is exponentially smaller than the deuterium-tritium fusion reaction at the temperatures and pressures possible with modern fusion reactors. Because of this, most designs focus on deuterium-tritium fusion, other than a new startup called Helion. I recommend this video if you would like a further deep dive into this, but to summarize, the prospects for helium-3 fusion are pretty unlikely for the foreseeable future. Interlune lists fusion energy on their website, but the proven use cases for helium-3 today are in refrigeration for superconductors in quantum computers, nuclear material detection, and medical imaging research. And Interlune CEO has stated that they will mostly be focusing on the quantum computer market. Each quantum computer needs a dilution refrigerator that can cool the chips down to a stable millikelvin level to produce superconductors. Around 20 liters of helium-3 are needed for these machines, so three to 10 grams total per machine. Quantum computing is a pretty hyped field right now, but realistically, there'll probably be only 100 to a few thousand of these quantum computers within the next few decades. Also, these newer quantum computers can also uh, reuse the refrigeration equipment from existing computers, and then the helium-3 atom itself is stable, which means it won't have radioactive decay over time like tritium. So the helium-3 market might grow beyond the existing eight kilograms in the future, but it seems like our existing supply chain would be able to handle this. Therefore, the only reason to mine helium-3 on the moon is if it is either cheaper or more scalable, and unfortunately, it is neither. First of all, the concentration of helium-3 on the moon is very low. The source in the Space News article put it at around 20 parts per billion on the high end. So you would need to process a minimum of 100,000 tons of regolith. Because you need to heat the rock to 600 to 800 Celsius to release the trapped helium-3 from the crystal structure, you need an insane amount of power. Even assuming ideal efficiency, for 100,000 tons over a one year time span, this works out to 1.9 megawatts. So you need about 10 times the solar panels of the International Space Station just to make one kilogram in one year. Plus, you would need to bring a giant furnace and all the other equipment and robots and everything else that you might need. The next problem is surface area and transportation. It's not viable to have a collection vehicle that also has a 1.9 megawatt furnace attached to it, so it would have to be moving the regolith back and forth from the central furnace and solar panel area. So this would add extra energy and time and would probably require multiple vehicles. Now, to extract the regolith at three meters deep, each batch of 100,000 tons would be four football fields of surface area. So the travel time between the furnace and the collection area would get longer and longer over time 
as you use up more soil. So if we did this today, if we include all of the things that we need, solar panels, all the different types of equipment, all the new development and innovation that would be necessary, this would cost tens of billions of dollars just to produce a single kilogram of helium-3. And then we could only sell the helium-3 for $20 million per kilogram. As part of their business plan, they mentioned that the cost of spaceflight is improving, which is true, but even with a fully functional Starship, this would take hundreds or even thousands of flights and would still cost several billions of dollars just for the transportation of the equipment. And that's just to produce a single kilogram. By the way, their claim is that this battery powered bulldozer thing can pull this off in one launch, which is pretty laughable and fraudulent in my opinion. And as proof that they know this doesn't work, we have this deal that they made with the Department of Energy to deliver three liters by 2029. Three liters works out to less than a single gram of helium-3 and would cost less than $10,000 at the market rate. So I think that's pretty revealing of what their capability is going to be in the near future. So this company is a total joke, but it hasn't stopped them from raising tens of millions of dollars, just like a bunch of very similar new space startups in the industry. And if you like this video, I have breakdowns just like this for asteroid mining and space-based solar, and they also have their own associated companies that are basically running these frauds and these concepts that just do not work at all. And they've been able to raise you know, 50 to $100 million, and I'm sure this company is going to be no different. And actually, this company is really not even very fraudulent if you compare it to, uh, for example, the asteroid mining company, Astroforge. So in this case, to process the helium-3, they need to heat up all that soil, but for that asteroid mining company, they actually need to do the same process, except they actually need to vaporize pretty much the same amount of rock on asteroids, which are not nearly as accessible as the moon. And in that case, we have similar levels of platinum group metals, which are even less valuable than helium-3. But I still think this company is really being very dishonest, and I think they should really come clean with the capability that they have. And their CEO actually used to run Blue Origin for like 20 years and pretty much should know better and should know that this is a fraud. But that is just the state of how things are in the space industry currently, where it seems like you could just take any sci-fi concept out there and just raise 50 million to $100 million with uh, some basic research and before you even have a really solid business plan. But anyway, I think I'm doing my part and I think it's uh, good for now just to try to get this more out in the open and try to educate people on these basic space concepts that can basically fool a lot of investors. With that being said, make sure to let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.